My name is Whitney Nicely, and I am the broker for Whitney Buys Houses. We're in Tennessee and Georgia. Um, I had an auction yesterday. I'm also an auctioneer, and we tried to sell 215 acres in Scott County, Tennessee, but it was a no sale. So uh, I'm still an auctioneer, though, so I can still claim that. Uh, if anybody knows anybody that needs 215 acres to hunt, let me know. We can still try to get something worked out. Um, happy first day of fall to everybody. I love fall and I really love it this year because I'm getting married next month. Yay! Uh, we'll see if Jason will hop on here in a little bit and see what I have to say today. Um, Alright, I've been talking about sellers and thank you. Good morning everybody. Um, what's important about sellers is that you need them before you can find buyers. So if you're in real estate, and I don't care if you're a real estate investor, or if you're a real estate agent, or if you're a real, real estate prospector, or whatever you want to do in real estate, you need sellers. Without sellers, you don't have a business. It doesn't matter how great you are, you need inventory, basically. So last week we talked about finding sellers, and you can send yellow letters out that say, hey, I want to buy your house. You can drive for dollars and find empty vacant houses and then call the owners. You can just be mouthy and tell everybody that I buy houses. You can have shirts made that say Whitney buys houses or Al buys houses or whoever buys houses. Or just I buy houses. Put it everywhere. Put it on your truck. Put it on your car. Put it on your kids. However you want to advertise is fine with me. So now that we've kind of narrowed down how we're going to find these sellers, let's talk about what we're going to do with them. So let's just say, for instance, you send out 100 yellow letters that say, hey, I want to buy your house at 123 Main Street. And all these people start calling back, and some of them are mad. How'd you get my information? This isn't uh, you're in your business. I don't want to sell my house. You're intruding on my personal rights and all sorts of stuff. People will say the darndest things when you send them a yellow letter that kindly says, hey, I want to buy your house. So with those people, I just say, I'm sorry. Let me know if you change your mind. Let me know if the situation changes. I'll still be interested in it in a year or two. And y'all, it's public record. If you buy a house, as far as I know, throughout the whole country, it goes in the newspaper that you bought a house. Now, it may not say how much you got your mortgage for. It may not say how much money you put down. It may not say, you know, anything but your name and the property address, but it's out there. It's public knowledge, unless you know some kind of secret that I don't know to make it not public knowledge. And there is a way to do that. I just don't know how. For most of Americans, though, if you buy a house, it goes in public record. That way, anybody can send anybody else a letter that says, hey, I want to buy your house. Okay, so let's say they call back and they say, great, I've been wanting to sell it. I had it listed last year. The realtor didn't do anything. They were lazy. All they did was take pictures and put it on the MLS. I never saw them again. You're going to say, perfect. Let me get a pin. Please try not to be driving when you do this. So you're going to say, what is the property address? That's important. We need to know what part of town we're in. If you are looking for something in X, Y, and Z subdivision and it's out way in the country, you may not want it. Or you may find out that you need to be out in the country. So just get the information first. Find out where your seller is. Then find out how much they're asking. Well, I don't know. You sent me the letter. Why don't you tell me what you pay me? Well, that's not really how I work. If you want to sell it, then you need to tell me what you will take for it. I've got a formula that I use, and I'm going to crunch some numbers and see if I can buy it. Oh. Okay, so we've got the address, and now we know what they want for it. The third thing we need to know is how much is it worth? I mean, if you're asking 100000 is that because it's worth... 150 and you just need to get out or is that because it's worth 80 and you owe a hundred thousand so it's very important we know what they're asking why they're asking it and what their end goal is and by asking how much the house is worth all of that kind of starts to flood out of them and you'll be amazed at what people start to tell you about and when I 
start this conversation, a lot of times they want to get into, well, I repainted five years ago, so it's definitely worth another 5000 I don't think so. If you repainted five years ago, it needs to be repainted again. And it's not worth $5,000 for paint. Um, okay, so we know the address, we know what it's worth, and we know why it's worth that and why they're asking so much. A lot of times there's a discrepancy between what it's worth and how much they owe because it needs repairs. So we need to know, are these going to be major repairs? Is the foundation gone? Which I've bought plenty of houses with bad foundations, so I'm not afraid of that. Um, I'm a little crazy, though, so that might be why I'm not afraid of it. But is it because the kitchen appliances are that green color from the 70s and they've never been updated and they're not energy efficient? So it's a $2,000 fix to go get new appliances? Or is there a hole in the ceiling the size of Volkswagens? Because I bought buildings like that before. We need to know what kind of repairs there are. And if there's no repairs, it's perfect, move in ready. You really want to ask them again what kind of repairs it is. Because I have looked at very few houses that did not need anything. And the ones that did not need anything are fine, and they're out there, and I buy those too. That's totally cool. I'm not saying don't buy a house that doesn't have a problem. I'm just saying that most people will kind of want to glaze over that because they don't want to scare you up front. So if you're just real conversational and you, you know, strike up a good relationship with them from the beginning, then they're more willing to say, okay, what really happened was blah, 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 blah. And if you can get that from them on the phone, then when you go back and you look up the house and you start to work on it and see if you want to go look at it, that's really going to help you decide how much you're going to offer them and what your strategy is. And people in real estate talk all the time about exit strategies. And when I first started, I could not figure out what an exit strategy was. And it's really important now that I've been in it that you kind of know, okay, if I buy this house for a hundred thousand and it's worth a hundred thousand, then my exit strategy is to find somebody that's going to make the payments on it and keep it in good condition and deal straight with the seller. And I'll get an assignment fee right up front just for putting two people together, just kind of like a normal broker, different kind of paperwork, but very similar to what a normal agent would do. If I have a house that is worth $10,000, wait, if, if I have a house that's worth $25,000 and they'll sell it to me for $10,000, then my exit strategy is to probably find somebody that'll give me twenty five for it, or 20 for it. That would be a wholesale. And I've never found one like that, so I've never done that. So don't ask me any questions about wholesaling. Um, I've done wholetailing where the house is um, $120,000 and I was asking 135 and boom, I found a cash buyer. That's wholetailing instead of um, wholesaling. So there's a little bit of a difference. You need to know what your plan is. And if the only plan you know is to get it under contract and sell it to somebody else, then go with that until you get in a situation where somebody says, you know, I own this house free and clear. And if I sell it to you straight up, I don't have anything to spend that money on. Well, let me tell you, there's two different issues with that. One is they don't want to pay taxes. Two is you need to get that money and buy another house with it and make them one of your private money investors. So if you find those people, let me know about them too because I'm always looking for people with money that want to buy real estate and don't really have the time and the effort and the energy to get out there and say, okay, I'm buying houses. Who wants to buy with me? I can do that all day, every day is buy houses. I just need somebody to help me say, yeah, I'll put the money down on that one. You can pay me off in five or six years, no problem. And those people are out there, y'all. I'm telling you, anytime you want to buy a house, there's plenty of people out there willing to sell you a house. They'll sell it to you for a cash price, which would be very low. They'll sell it to you for an owner finance price, which was probably gonna be medium as to what it's gonna be worth. Um, depending on how many repairs it has. 
And then there's going to be people out there who will just let you take over the rest of their 30-year note because they're getting, you know, divorced or they've got to move or their job transferred or all sorts of different issues that people have in life that aren't bad issues, but that they just need to get rid of a house quickly. A lot of times I talk to people that have had a house and they just had it for so long they've kind of forgotten about it. They're just so used to making those payments. They didn't know that there was a way that they could not have to make those payments. And that's when I come in and look like a rock star because I figured out how I'll find somebody else to take over the house for you. Um, other people's money is very, very important. And that is how you really keep your cash flow going so that you've always got somebody that wants to sell a house, you've always got somebody that wants to buy a house, and then you have tenant buyers in the middle. So it is a lot like juggling. It is a lot like having you know three or four different balls up in the air and making sure that they all land at the same spot. But as long as you keep going and keep going and keep working it and keep putting it into people's heads that you buy houses and then you can sell them this way, that way, or the other, you'll never run out of inventory. There's so many opportunities out there. Like, I'm getting married next month, right? Yay! I'm trying not to buy houses, and I cannot stop. I had two guys call me yesterday while I was at my auction. They were like, yeah, I got this house. I got to get rid of it real quick. And I'm like, okay, that's a good deal. That one's not such a good deal. But I got to tell these people, you know, I'm sorry. I, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm not working next month because I'm, I'm going to be gone. I'm going to get married and enjoy my honeymoon and not worry about real estate. And I'll be back in November really ready to get after it again. Uh, that may also makes me want to remind you, I'm not taking any new coaching students until November when I get back. So if you want to sign up for coaching, then go ahead and send me an email and I'll send you back the paperwork. But we won't start until November because I've got bride brain. It's crazy. So, okay, now we covered a couple different ways of how you're going to get, I do need a break. I need a break real bad. Um, how you're going to get the sellers. They're out there. You can send them letters, you can drive by, or you can tell everybody on Facebook and in your Sunday school class that you want to buy houses. And then the floodgates will open, and they will just start sending you stuff from who knows where all the time. Once you get these people that say, okay, I want to sell it, you need to know what to ask them. The first thing you're going to ask is, where is the house? What is the address? Are you the owner or is it your wife's mother's brother's house and you're just helping? You need to talk to the person that owns it. Very important. You talk to the person who owns it or who's in control of it paper-wise. So you need the address. You need to know who owns it. You need to know how much they're asking. You need to know how much it's worth. If they're asking $100,000 and it's worth $100,000, it's cool. You can still take houses like that. If it's worth 150 and they just need 80 to clear their mortgage and go on about their life, cool. Buy houses like that too. Sounds great to me. Um, if it's worth 100 and they owe 80 and it needs 50,000 in repairs, you're really gonna have to think about that one. So be sure you know what it's worth. What you're gonna sell it for is what it's worth, basically. Do your own research. And next week I'll probably talk about how you do research to figure out the best way to structure what you're gonna pay. Because if it's worth 150, you can't pay 150 and put repairs in it and then expect to make money. So you need to make sure that your math is important and it's not really complicated math, it's elementary school math. And I'll try to work through some of that next week. Um, I hope Jason will be here with me for that. He's the one that's um, asked me to marry him because he's much better at the math than I am. Uh, there goes Abby the Labby, y'all say hi. All right, well, I think that's all I have to say today. Make sure you get the address, the asking price, and what it's worth. Three most important things. You can talk about bedrooms. You can talk about lot size. You can talk about whatever you want to. The most important thing is the address, what they're asking, and what it's worth. If you all have any questions, be sure you can send me an email, um, info at WhitneyNicely.com. You can send uh, a DM on Instagram. I'm at Whitney Buys Houses. Of course, we're at Wit Buys Houses here. And you can always check out our website, too. We've got 10 houses up right now, WhitneyBuysHouses.com. Thanks, Calandra. Um, I hope you all have a great day, week. I'll see you again next week. And while I'm on my honeymoon, we will not have Wednesdays with Whitney. So just a reminder. <laughs> but that'll be later in October. We've still got plenty of lessons to go between then. Thank you. I appreciate everybody. Have a really good morning. And 
I hope I don't have any technical issues turning this thing off today. We'll focus on Abby, though. Abby, say, say good morning. Say good morning. All right, y'all have a good day.